Hello, and thank you for joining me. If you're watching this video, then you've probably been looking for something to do with interviews and how to make them more successful for you. My name is Martin Hamilton, and I've been helping uh, leaders, teams, and individuals build their capabilities over the last 20 years or so. Um, and in this short video, I'm going to introduce you to a set of techniques that I've been using for the last 15 years, um, which will put you in control in an interview. If you stick around to the end of the video, I've actually got another free gift for you, which will help you uh, just with meetings more generally. So uh, if, you, if you are struggling with interviews, then like me, um, like lots of other people that I speak to, you're probably struggling with the challenge of multitasking in the meetings. And what, of course, you're trying to do is you're trying to capture lots of information in the interview. Um, you're trying to uh, build a rapport with the, the other person in the interview, so you're trying to make eye contact. Uh, and keep that rather than just sort of asking questions and taking notes. Um, but you're also, importantly, you're trying to work with the information that you're hearing. So you're trying to analyse it in real time and then be able to develop further questions that give you the insights that you need. So these are just some of the many challenges that we, we all face when we are uh, interviewing. So what I'd like to do is introduce you to a set of techniques that um, will help you to overcome those. So here they are. Okay, so here is an example that I'm going to work through with you. Uh, if it looks a little bit overwhelming to start with, don't worry. Uh, if you've not seen Smart Wisdom before, it will look a little bit strange and a little bit different to start with, and maybe even a little bit off-putting. But um, I guarantee by the end of this uh, little demonstration, you will feel really comfortable with what you see on the page in front of you. So there are essentially there are two techniques going on here. Well, there actually there are a lot more which you can learn in more depth, but um, there are two main ones. The first one is planning for uh, the, the interview that you're about to run. And then the second is then capturing and analysing the information that you're hearing in the interview. And so to make it easy to distinguish, what I've done is I've just simply done these in different colours. So in the, um, in the dark, the black here, you can see I have my interview plan. That's here, but I've also done the interview plan here and I'll explain why there are two different ways in a moment. And then in the blue, uh, you've got your information that you're capturing in this interview. Uh, so if you want to keep it really simple, then we'll just stick to uh, uh, to using this structure, this structure here. Although, as you can see, the words are pretty much the same. So what I, in this scenario, uh, let's imagine I'm an NHS uh, nurse. I am um, receiving a, a patient who is uh, has a stab wound and I'm trying to capture some information from the patient that could be helpful to um, either the police or to other medical staff in the hospital. Um, this is something that, uh, you know, this is an example that um, uh, could be replicated in lots of different ways, lots of different situations. This is just a completely made up example just for the purposes of demonstrating the techniques. So, uh, Either using these techniques here or, or the structure here, what you can see is that I'm interested um, in cap interviewing the, uh, uh, the patient on the incident itself. I'm finding more information about the patient, um, finding some information out about their injury, and then there might be some other things that I might want to explore. So what I've done uh, before I sit down with the patient, I will actually sit down and I'll just I'll maybe prepare my structure. And as I say, I can do that here so that it's easy for me to capture the information directly off the back of it. Or I can set it out in the planning techniques over on the left. So what I'd like to know is, so the incident, when did it happen? Where did it happen? How did it happen? Then from the patient, I want to know some of the, some details about the patient. I want to know how they arrived at the hospital. I want to know if they were accompanied when they arrived at the hospital. As far as their injury is concerned, I'd like some details on the injury. I'd like to know what caused the injury. And then as far as the item that caused the injury, where is it right now? And then there may be some other questions that I might have, which um, might either come through the interview itself, um, or as I say, I may be able to identify them up front. OK, so uh, so imagine that I'm sitting down with uh, the patient now and I'm now asking the questions. Um, if the patient gives me answers to questions uh, in a different order, because, of course, as you know, in an interview, uh, people rarely structure their thoughts in a completely organised way. And they'll often, often tell you the thought that's in their head. But that doesn't matter. Using the, these techniques, I can capture the information in any order that I'm given it. And I can then still see where I've got gaps and where I still need to ask questions. So I might start the interview by saying, OK, tell me a little bit about when the, in the 
um, incident happened. So now I move over into the blue pen and in the blue pen I'm now capturing the, the details so that I can see the information that I've captured against each question. So when did the incident happen? Well, it happened today at 3 p.m. Where? Well, it's in the town centre in the Asda car park. Um, how did it happen? Well, it was a knife attack. Okay, so now I've, if, if I want to know more information about the incident, um, I can either capture the information by building on it here, or I can just simply start by creating a new branch down here that um, is called incident, and then I can keep going. And then at a glance, I can see I've got um, more than one point of, um, one more than one source of information on the incident. Okay, so when um, I capture the information, you'll you may notice that the uh, the information structure itself actually presents questions for the interviewer, which is which is really helpful. So the, once you start writing the branches of information, um, it starts to prompt prompt you with what else you might want to know about that. So how did it happen? So that's so a knife attack. Well, tell me more about the attack. Um, it was in the town centre. It was in the Asda car park. Well. Where in the car park was it? Was it near the store? Was it um, near the entrance? Uh, where, you know, so you can start, the, the structure itself will, will present to you with further questions, not all of which will be relevant, but you'll be able to decide which ones you need to follow up. So now I've got to move on to the second um, topic that I need to capture, and that is about the patient um, themselves. So patient details. So it's uh, John Doe. So I might then capture this, uh, that he is a, is, is a white male. So he's male, white. Um, and he tells me he's a carpenter, married, and he's got two children. So I can say kids and two. Um, and if I wanted to know, if I needed to know um, their names and more information about them, I could find that out. If I needed to know his contact details of his wife, perhaps, um, in case the hospital needed to make contact, I could capture that information too. I then find out about when, how did, um, how did uh, John arrive at the hospital? So a uh, friend brought him in the car. And again, if I need some more information about the friend, I can explore that a little bit further. Uh, he was um, accompanied, but his friend left immediately. I'll come back to the red annotations uh, at the end and explain why, because this is the value add that you'll get from this structure. As far as the injury is concerned and injury details, then uh, it's a leg wound, um, six centimetres long, and it was deep, uh, bleeding heavily, and it's been bandaged. Um, the cause, well, it was a blade, a knife um, with a clean cut. The item itself, in terms of where it is, currently unknown. Okay, so they might wanted, I might have wanted other information perhaps then about um, uh, John's age or his, uh, I might say, explored his background a bit more. Uh, you know, in this instance, in this example, a little bit contrived perhaps, but in this instance, he said, well, uh, he works as a professional, he works in a bank. Uh, well, that's interesting because earlier on, I captured that he was a carpenter. Now, this is where the techniques really start to come to life. Um, as you're capturing the information, at a glance, you can now scan the information you've captured really quickly and you can spot either opportunities to ask more questions or you can start to spot where um, the information may not be consistent. So there's clearly an example where there's two bits of different information that have been given, which I may just have misheard. So I can I have the opportunity to go back and clarify. I also have the opportunity to um, to asterisk or mark uh, the any information that I think is of particular relevance. So as I've gone through this, um, there were three bits of information that I captured. One was that his friend left immediately. One was that the item that, that caused the wound is its location is unknown. And the third was that he gave me some information that in, his, in terms of his medical history, he has, has an allergy to penicillin. Now, those three bits of information then clearly jump off the page at me when I'm looking at them so that if I need to pass that information on to either the police or other medical staff, it's very easy for me to do so. OK, so that's a, just a very, very simple illustration of how the techniques uh, work, so how you can prepare for a conversation um, and how you can then capture information in a way that means that you are in control of it. So you are in control of the questions you need to ask. You're in control of the quality of the information that you're being given so that by the time you get to the interview, the end of the interview, uh, you can let the patient go, um, or if it's in a business situation, you can let the candidate go, um, uh, knowing that you've asked all the key questions that you need to ask. So I hope you find that little demonstration uh, helpful. If you did, it would do me a great service if you would hit the, the like uh, icon, give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you think it might be of 
help to friends or colleagues, then please do share it with them. You also find that there's a little subscribe button so that if you find this um, uh, topic helpful and you'd, you'd like uh, similar uh, guidance and help uh, for free uh, via, from, from me, then hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon and you'll be notified whenever there's any new content issued onto, onto YouTube. So uh, as promised at the very beginning, um, there's an, an extra gift for you for sticking with me for this length of time. Uh, in the description below this uh, video, you'll find that there's information on where you can find out more about um, smart wisdom and the techniques that I've just been demonstrating. But you'll also find there that there's a link um, to uh, our free guide on um, meetings and managing knowledge in meetings. Because of course, the whole um, purpose of the point of what we've been talking about uh, in the interview techniques just a moment ago is all around helping to manage information in meetings. So why not click on that link and um, sign up and you'll get our free guide uh, with absolutely no obligations whatsoever and I hope you find it really helpful. Um, so thank you again for joining me and um, look out for more of the same. Thanks. Bye-bye now.